Welcome back to GB Guns. We've got here a case from Magnum Research. Now between the Magnum Research words and those eagles there, the character, you might be wondering if I went out and got myself a hand cannon. We've got a nice lockable case that's plenty strong and large. Inside it though is something a little bit smaller than what you were probably thinking. This is the MR9 from Magnum Research. That's what's coming up on GB Guns. So having got the case out of the way, empty magazine with witness windows in the back for 15 rounds. And the gun itself, of course, is clear. Wanted to show also that you do get a second magazine. These are labeled Magnum Research on the bottom of them. And it appears, made in Italy, these are either Acmags or Metgar, either way we know they're going to be good magazines. We also get two other back straps. A large one that's got a bit of a beaver tail to it, and a smaller one. Our manual, which if you're not familiar with uh, the MR9, I would recommend reading, because this gun has three trigger modes. We also have five replacement front sights and an Allen key. So, on to the gun. Starting off with our Fire Mountain Outdoors inspired walk around the gun. We come to the front, slide to frame, almost like it's one piece. There is no movement at all, nice and snug, barrel just as snug into the slide itself. We've got four different spots uh, for mounting rail on there, some serrations up here if you're one of those people that likes the finger grip MR9 Eagle on this nice smooth slide, build your Minnesota. The magazine release is the paddle type. Now before you go freaking out about that, if you haven't seen my other stuff, you know that I love the paddle release and here's a quick demonstration as to why. I've got my hand in my shooting grip. If I were to try to push a magazine release, especially if it were right there, I would have to release my grip and rotate a little bit to get to it. Right? Or put an extended release on and risk it going off in the, in the holster. With the paddle, however, using my middle finger, I can drop the magazine without shifting my grip at all. See, I didn't have to rotate my hand. Some folks do it with their trigger finger. My hands are a bit large for that, but the middle finger works just fine. And it's ambidextrous, so left-handers can still operate the gun. Alright, looking at that ejection, some people criticize this test, but I like to see, does the gun help kick the mag out? And you can tell from that hop that it does. So in the event of there being grit or anything like that in there, we know it's going to come shooting out. See that once more without my hand in the way? It comes out. So back onto the frame itself, we've got some grip texturing and gentle finger swells here, which is nice. It's not forcing your hand in any one particular spot. This thinning in the rear works well with the fold of the hand, so you're not pushing against the gun. Nice large slide stop, slide release. Serrations, though short, there's definitely plenty of them for grabbing. This button I'll get to in a second. We do have plastic sights, classic three dot, our cocking indicator, slide to frame fit in the back, just as snug, very precise, and then around to the right side of the gun. Overall pretty sharp looking, a little bit different, right? That button is the main thing that makes this different. The three trigger modes on the MR9. The first of the trigger mode, as it is, we have that first area there, that's the anti-stress, are you sure you want to do this, um, did you get startled while getting prepared to defend yourself, or were you going to jerk the trigger, it kind of stops you. Then you come to your classic striker release, way in the back. If you hold the trigger back for some reset, which is what I like to do for follow-up shots, very short crisp. Now, back to that button. Let's say you've just inserted a magazine, close the slide, right, we've got a round chambered, but you don't want it to be on that 
single action, you can push the button here, which decocks it safely, and now we're in a double action. See there's no mid-click. It's a longer, heavier pull, brings the striker back, and releases it. So we've got a single action, we've got a double action. That's two of the three modes. Let's also say you've got your round in, right, it's chambered, you've decocked it, and you've decided, no, I want the light single action. This needs to be a precise shot, or for whatever reason you want to go to back to single action. All you have to do is move the slide about that far. Notice that wasn't far enough that it would be unchambering around. In fact, it's just far enough to do a good chamber check. And look at that, we're back in single action. The third trigger mode is in between, is if you just take it to there and uh, you've now passed that anti-stress mode, as you call it, and now you're just on a conventional single action. If you fire, let go in the gun cycles, you're back to anti-stress again. If you fire, hold on cycle actions, and then let go, it'll stop at that midpoint. So those are the three trigger modes takes, I wouldn't say a bit of learning to, to operate, because you can shoot this gun just as you would any other, uh, but to master and be co cognizantly aware of the three different trigger modes, it will take some practice. Uh, it's more of a connoisseur and well-trained and experienced shooter's gun than it is a first gun to pick up. Speaking of picking up and uh, knowing guns. Let's pull this thing apart. We'll do a field strip and take a look So inside. field stripping the MR9 is like most modern guns. We're going to, having tripped the trigger, pull down on the takedown levers on both sides, and off comes the slide. So looking at the frame, the rails are steel inserts in the polymer. Everything is rather clean cut. The slide, we have a captured flat spring with a, a polymer sort of recoil absorbing potentially end there. It is a plastic guide rod. Look at our barrel. Got a clean uh, ramp there. I wouldn't quite call it polished, but it's definitely smoother than the coating. Not too bad. Let's see if uh, how supported the chamber is. Dropping in one of our match rounds. See, it's not a fully supported chamber. Get that round out. It is definitely snug. You saw there's zero. Well, there's a little bit of wriggle room. So this is likely to be very reliable and not so picky about rounds. That's one of the things on, on chamber fit. Some people get very excited about how snug it can be. The downfall with the really snug ones, of course, is that uh, then if you've got rounds that aren't particularly perfect, or maybe there's a little bit of dirt in there, your reliability goes down. So picking up our slide. Very nicely machined. The coating on here, there's one small defect in the coating. And on the inside, very clean cut, no nonsense. That's our safety plunger. Very clean. That's the MR9. I have wanted to get my hands on one of these for a long, long time. I'm a fan of other guns with the three trigger system. Um, this one, of course, being special because it's American. Uh, We'll get this back together and out to the range. I'm curious if any of you are MR9 owners or have friends that are or have shot one, what your thoughts are on uh, this Desert Eagle. That's not quite a Desert Eagle, the MR9 Eagle. Um, 9mm from Magnum Research. Thanks for watching GB Guns. And if you watch this far, you appreciate our format and what we're doing. Or maybe you're waiting to make that really angry comment. Either way, click the big griffin up here to subscribe. The link over here to show you a related video based on what you just watched. 
or down here is the playlist relevant to this video. Once again, we appreciate your feedback, your comments. Join us on Facebook, Instagram, and we'll see you in the next video.